All right. Well, while everyone from the chat is working on that that challenge, kind of a cool challenge, that uh, curved alignment post. While everyone from the chat is working on that, I think it'll be a good time for us to do an on-shape live solve, and we are going to attempt to live solve this model here. This comes from the practice models from uh, the end of 2023, the uh, September practice or the December practice model. This one was called Shark Arm because it looks like a shark. We saw this one in a tournament, and whenever I'm looking at a 3D model, I always kind of go through the same steps. The first thing I do is I look at the model and I ask myself, does the model have symmetry? And the reason that's important is because that's going to help me to locate my front plane or my top plane or my right plane. So this model does have symmetry, so my front plane is going to be right here. And then the next thing that I do once I determine the model has symmetry is I start to ask myself, how am I going to build this model? You know, what's going to be my very first feature? And to determine your very first feature, you want to look for things like dimensions that are all coming from the same datum or the same reference point. So like this 155, this 80 dimension, it's all coming from this location right here. And so it seems like this might be a good location for my origin. Maybe my origin ends up right at the center of this circular shape here. So whenever I'm looking at a, a, a brand new 2D print and I'm going from 2D to 3D, I always kind of go through and ask myself the same questions. Where is the, Where are the planes of symmetry? How are those planes of symmetry going to convert to planes in my model? So this model does have symmetry. There's a plane right here. That'll probably be the front plane of my model. Then the next question, where, you know, where is the origin going to be in this model? The origin is going to be right here, right at the center of the circle. And then that lets me answer the next question. What is my very first feature going to look like? And I think that in this model, my very first feature is just going to be a circle that gets extruded and it's going to be extruded mid plane or symmetric in both directions. And that's going to give me my very first feature. And then my second feature maybe would be this circle back here again, extruded symmetric or the same in both directions. And then maybe my third feature would be a scale that has a, a center line going through it so like a center line going right through the middle of the part and then it would be a sketch that looks something like this and when I revolve that when I use the center line to revolve this shape I'm gonna end up with a cone and you can see here this is a conical face so I'm gonna end up with a cone and then for my final feature maybe what I'll do is I'll make a new sketch plane uh, kind of offset at an angle up in this location and then I can create this tombstone shape and I can extrude this tombstone shape down and into the rest of the model and that's how I created the model when I did it the first time but then I watched the tournament and I saw Victor K do this a very different way with that feature and so I'm going to make sure that we leave enough time that I can show you that as well. So let's do a window snipping tool here. I'm just gonna use the traditional window snipping tool here. Gonna move this over to my second screen so that I can go through and try to model up this part. I'm gonna uh, get into Onshape here. So Onshape, my 3D CAD program of choice these days. So we'll get into Onshape here and let's see how long it takes to create this model and kind of what this walkthrough would look like in on shape. I'm going to bring up my keyboard cam here so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing as far as hotkeys go. I'm going to choose create a document. This is going to be created in the public space. So that means that any time in the future, if you want to look up this model, you could look up 23-12-01 shark arm. So I'm going to say create public document. And so what that means is, you know, just so you guys can see what this looks like, let me close this document. If you go into Onshape, if you log into Onshape and you go over here on the left to where it says public, and then if you do a search here in public for shark arm, you can see if there's anybody else who's modeled this part. So this is always really exciting for me to kind of see how other people are going through and modeling this part. And look at all the different Onshape users that have modeled this part. I think it's just so cool. Um, and of course, you could open up one of these models and you could poke through somebody else's uh, feature tree. So, you know, this model here was modeled by Larry. I saw the username before I opened it. And what I can do here is I can click on this button here, versions and history, and then I can actually go back and look at where Larry started with this model. So he started way back here at the very beginning of this part studio. You know, what was the first feature that, that Larry created in this model? So even though it's not my model, if I'm just opening it up from the... the um, uh, from the public space, I can actually go all the way back to the very beginning here, go all the way back here to the very beginning. And when I go all the way back to the very beginning, I can see what the very first feature was that Larry used to create this model. And I think that's so cool that you can do that in Onshape and you can kind of poke through somebody else's work and actually see all the steps that they did 
to create a model. The true, you know, every single change you make in Onshape is captured. So you can actually see the true entire history of anyone's model, uh, not just your own, and not just by rolling through the tree. You know, you're actually seeing every single step that they did. Every every th single change you make is is logged in that document. So very cool stuff here. Uh, let me close this document. Let's go into our own here, owned by me. And we're gonna go into this shark arm that we just created. And let's get started with this model in Onshape. We're gonna stick to the game plan, front plane, begin a sketch. So I press S to bring up my sketching menu, uh, begin a new sketch here, press N to get normal too. I'm gonna press S again here and I'm gonna create a circle. Now my very first feature is gonna be this 77 millimeter diameter uh, circle, my very first uh, sketched entity. And I'm just gonna extrude that as a solid, but that doesn't mean that I, I only include that information in this first sketch. I can include a lot of information in this first sketch, like this 43 millimeter diameter circle and like a, a rectangle here. This rectangle is gonna have a width of 16 millimeters and the depth of this rectangle uh, I'm not sure it's not that that dimension so I'm just gonna hit escape and then what I could do is I could take this uh, this line here and pick the origin and remember in on shape you don't have to hold control or anything to do multi select it you have what's called persistent selection so I pick this line I pick this point now you see the mouse is telling me that I have two things selected and then I can press shift M that's a shortcut for midpoint and now I can press S again and go into a dimension from this arc to this line and that keyway is going to be at 50 millimeters and so similarly I could create the geometry for the circle over here on this end that's going to end up getting extruded so I could make a circle over here I could say that circle is going to have a diameter of 40 I could make another circle here I could say that circle is going to have a diameter of 20 and I can make sure that these are horizontal it looks like it is showing a horizontal relationship and so I could just finish up by adding in a dimension maybe from this plane to this point of 155. Now, you know, kind of continuing this idea, I certainly could also include the revolved sketch, the revolve information in this first sketch, or I could save that for a separate sketch. We each have to decide, you know, when a sketch gets a little too complicated, when there's too much in one sketch, maybe we just decide to leave the sketch like this, or maybe we decide to get in there and create the additional geometry because it's going to have tangency relationships to these lines. So this, uh, arc and this line, I'm going to press T, make those tangent, this line, this arc, T, make those tangent. You know, since that tangency is going to be part of that original, um, uh, of the geometry that I'm going to be using, maybe it makes sense to include that geometry. And then here's a little trick that I'm doing uh, that, you know, if I want to create a line here and I want it to be exactly vertical to that point, but Onshape isn't recognizing where that point is, you can just kind of hold your cursor over that point and it almost like wakes it up. And that way you could drop in a point here directly below. And there we go. Now we have the sketch that we're going to end up using for our revolved shape when we get to that, uh, con that conical shape that's running down the model. So I think that's a pretty good amount of information here for this first sketch. Let's S key extrude. And by default, on shape just kind of grabs the entire profile so i'm going to press the space bar space bar is kind of like clear selections in on shape and then i'm just going to choose certain regions of this sketch to extrude so i am going to extrude uh, the whole thing here i'm going to save this keyway geometry for a little bit later in the design so i'm going to just kind of go through and get everything from that region i'm going to press the tab key to advance through to the depth 110 tab 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 space bar for symmetric and then i'm going to press enter to finish that feature now i can show this sketch and then I can jump into the extrude command again and this time I could choose maybe these regions here choose these regions here and I can choose to extrude those regions tab 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 this is going to extrude to 60 tab 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 space enter so I'm using the space bar to hit that tick mark for symmetric and then enter to uh, finish out the command. And so now I could jump into a revolve command. And so for the revolve region it's going to be this region and uh, this region inside here. Let's get this region. Sometimes you have to press the tilde key to kind of get that uh, internal region. Let's see if we can get it there. There we go. And tilde in this region here, get that internal region. And tilde here to get that internal region. Actually, you know, looking at this, I probably don't actually need all these different regions, but don't pick this for the revolve axis. And so there you go. Now you see we're taking that one sketch and we're using that sketch again to revolve that sketch around that geometry. And so now we're going to say that we want that to be an add. So new is going to make a, a new body down here or a new part down here. You'll see that, you know, that first cylinder I made, then the second cylinder I made, they're not connected to each other. So Onshape thinks those are two different parts. But now when I go to make this third one, instead of making that a third part, 
part, I can use this option here for add, and I can say merge with all, merge with all. And so when I do merge with all, now I can hit the check mark, and there we go. That's a pretty good looking shape. That's our shark body there. I think that looks pretty darn good. And so now for the next, uh, the next feature, what I might do is go to the front plane, begin a sketch, orient my view, uh, make a line, and I'm going to uh, click on this point here and make this line at a distance of 80, uh, 80 millimeters. And then that line is going to be at an angle of 33 degrees. So 33 degrees there. And then what I could do is I can exit that sketch. I can pick that line, pick the end point of that line. So again, this persistent selection in on shape. I pick this line here. I pick the end point of the line. Now you can see I've got two things selected. And now I can just go up and choose plane. And when I choose plane, you can see here that it's uh, on shape is automatically selecting point normal. I have a video about this on the on shape channel talking about how to create planes and talking about how you kind of like pre cook your selection for a plane. So this is going to be point normal. And then I'm going to hit the green check mark here. And now you see I've got a new plane created up in that location. And so now I can pick that plane, begin a sketch, uh, orient my view, and I can begin sketching that tombstone shape. So the tombstone shape is going to come up here, come back, touch the end point, come up and around. And then that's going to have a radius of 26. And then I'm going to bring that tombstone shape down. Uh, remember, if, if you're not able to get that horizontal relationship to the original point, just take your mouse down and hold your mouse over that original point. And there you can see now I can get that horizontal relationship uh, or vertical relationship to that original point. And so now I can take that line that I used to make the, the, um, uh, the plane the end point of that line, and I can take the, the center point of my circle here, and I can make those coincident. So you just press I to make those coincident. And there we go. The tombstone is directly in line with the, the geometry we used to make the plane. And so now from here, what I can do is I can choose extrude, and I can say I want that to go up to body or up to part, and then pick this part here. And so let's reverse the direction, and there we go. Now we see that tombstone shape is running right up to the, the body of that part. And that looks pretty good. Um, it looks a little bit funky here at the peak, but um, that may be... Oh, I see what I did there. I positioned the line incorrectly for that. Uh, the line should have been positioned a little bit differently. See, this is like Widow's Peak here. I wasn't expecting to see that. And now that I'm looking at the drawing again, I'm realizing that I made the line come directly from here. But that was incorrect. The line should have come from here, from the point of tangency. And then instead of making it coincident here, I should have made it coincident to the midpoint of the arc at that point of tangency. So let's go back and fix that. Sometimes we make mistakes when we're doing these drawings. It's all good. Let's go back to... Don't panic. Nobody panic, okay? It's all good. So we'll just go back here to the sketch, and then let's get normal two on that sketch. And we're going to get rid of that coincident relationship on that point, and then that way we can drag this line up to here. And then we're going to say that that is going to be a uh, relationship of tangent. So here to here is going to be tangent. And then we'll also make this point and this arc here coincident so we press i so t for tangent uh, i for coincident and then just as a sanity check i'm just going to make a, a perpendicular line here and just add a dimension from that perpendicular line to the origin because that's where the dimension's coming from okay and that's also 80 so that was just like a quick check just to make sure that it was 80 i, I you know geometrically it sounded it felt right felt like it should be right but just wanted to double check and make sure okay so we're getting that same 80 dimension that we need there so that's good and then we've got our new plane created here and then in this sketch that's on that new plane instead of this being a coincident relationship so we can just go right here and get rid of that coincident relationship it's going to be coincident to um, the midpoint of this arc and so sometimes when i'm doing these types of relationships i'll just kind of like explicitly drop a point in there and then that way i can make that point and that point coincident sometimes i think that's a little bit easier um, to, to visualize what's going on. So now we exit that sketch, and there we go. There's our extrusion going up to that body. And that all looks good, except there's one problem. The problem is that we weren't really sure how deep this sketch needed to go in order to end up in the right place. So like this sketch here, we really weren't sure how deep this needed to go. Like if I go down too far, I'm going to uh, be sticking out the bottom. If I don't go down far enough, then I'm going to end up in the scenario that I'm in right now. So, you know, maybe that requires some additional like intersection curve to get the perfect point. But the cool thing is in on shape, we could always go in and use delete face and then pick this face here. And then you see on shape extends it. Yeah, exactly. Sharor knows. Sharor knows. Yeah, delete face. We can just use delete face there. And then that extends 
places it, and there we go. And now we've got that tombstone shape. Now, this was a lot of work, right? There, there was there was a problem here with this original sketch. The sketch was in the wrong spot, and then I had to make that additional plane, and then I had to make that that sketch of the tombstone, and then I had to make this extrude, and then I had to clean it up with a delete face at the end. So this was a lot of work to really get this shape into the right spot and get it looking right. And then I presented this model during a tournament, and I saw Victor K create this model, and he took a very different approach to this feature. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all those, those extra features that I just created, and I'm going to go back to that sketch. And remember, we used this sketch originally to create the, the plane where we created the tombstone shape. Well, instead of instead of creating a plane there, uh, when I saw Victor K do this in the tournament, what he did was he started a second line here. So he made you know made this first line tangent to this arc going up at 33 degrees, 80 millimeters. Then he created a second line here that went from from this line perpendicular all the way down to the the middle of the part. So let's get that perpendicular. There's perpendicular all the way down to the middle of the part. Then over to the origin and then up to this point here. So look at how beautiful that sketch is. It's like a work of art. It's so beautiful. Because now all Victor K had to do here was S key extrude, tab, tab, tab. The radius of that arc is 26 or 26 times two, tab, 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 symmetric. And there we go. There's the tombstone shape in exactly the right location. And so now after that, all we have to do is add a fillet. So S key fillet. This is gonna be a full round fillet. So it's going to be this, this, whoops, sorry. It's going to be this, this, and this. So full round fillet, and there it is. There is that beautiful tombstone shape. So instead of having to make all those features, you know, we just were able to do it in three, and we know that this is exactly in the right spot along that shark arm. So when I saw when I saw Victor K do that in the tournament, I thought it was so awesome. I was like, no way. That like I spent so much time getting that right, and he just did it so quick. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Let's finish out this model here. I'm gonna take this curve here, S key extrude, and we're gonna make that um, an extrusion. Whoops, let me select that again. Very, very cool from Victor K there. Uh, this one is going to go through all, and it's going to be symmetric. And so that's going to give us the hole on that side. I guess I could have done the same thing on this side all, all in one step there. But let's do another extrusion, um, S key extrude. And this is going to be a remove. Um, this one is also going to be through all symmetric. And then the way that I'm picking these regions on the inside is I'm, I'm just pressing the tilde key. So I'm just kind of in here. You know, this might be easier if I go to a front view. So I'm going to do shift one to get to a front view here. And then I'm just going to, I'm pressing the tilde key here that you can see it highlighting on my overlay. And that way I'm able to select these kind of internal regions to include in this extrusion. So there we go. That gives us that kind of key weight extrusion there. And then the final feature on this thing is the counter bore. So we're going to go hole and we're going to say this is going to be a counter bore. Um, this is going to be with the dimensions that are shown there, 16 millimeters. Uh, and then the depth of that is, um, oh, sorry, the, uh, the, the counter bore has diameter 32 and then a depth of 8 millimeters. And then I'll use this button here, select mate connector. That way I can just pick the center of this face. And this will punch that hole all the way through. And so, Sharor, you know what I'm going to do. So P to get rid of the plane, shift P to get rid of all those sketches. And then I'm going to do a delete face and just get rid of this extra face here because that hole is not supposed to be going through the inside of that part. So just get rid of that extra face there. Uh, the part color already looks pretty good like the print. So the only thing I need to do here is assign material. So this is down at the very bottom. I'm going to do assign material. I'm going to grab this material from the Too Tall Toby library. And the material is going to be 1060 alloy. Hit the green check mark. And then down here in the lower right, there is an icon for mass properties. So way down here in the lower right, there's an icon for mass properties. So I click that icon, click the body, and I come up with a mass of 1996 grams 1996 grams and so i would enter that one in 1996 as my answer and then let's go back to our presentation and see if we got it right oh yeah 1996 is the correct answer that's how we do it baby so that is your live solve of the shark arm a pretty cool model a couple of different ways to do it lots of cool lessons in there if you guys enjoyed that be sure to like be sure to subscribe let me know down in the comments what you thought about that live solve how you solved it and if you learned anything along the way and with that we are going to get into our answer here for the chat i know you guys have been diligently working away at